After weeks of insisting he would remain in the race, United States President Joe Biden says he is dropping out as Democratic candidate for the White House. President Biden intends on serving out the remainder of his term in office, but has endorsed Vice President Kamala Harris to take on Donald Trump. He has encouraged his party to unite behind her, making her the, nominate, the nominated candidate for the Democratic Party. Meanwhile, Harris praised Biden's selfless and patriotic act and said she intends to earn and win her party's nomination. Harris faces a staggering political to-do list in the coming days, from securing the votes of delegates to her party's nomination and picking a running mate. She has now raised $49.6 million for her presidential campaign in less than a day after President Biden's announcement. For more on this, I'm now being joined by Ambassador Joe Kashi, Nigerian's former permanent secretary to the Ministry of Foreign Affairs. Ambassador, thank you for being here. My pleasure, Constance. How are you? Very well. You know, you've followed everything that happened. What do you think of the impact this will make? President Joe Biden dropping out of the race. What impact will it make on the Democratic Party? Great impact. It has already made an impact and it's going to make more. Um, after three weeks of fighting one another, the Democratic Party is far, far, far more united than they have ever been in the last couple of years. They, they are coalescing behind one candidate. And uh, nothing is as good as when a party has a strong base. The, the announcement, the resignation, I mean, the dropout of the president and, uh, you know, supporting a candidate like the vice president has unified the base and energized the base. And that's what they needed to do for now. So do you think that Kamala Harris is a match for Donald Trump? Absolutely. Absolutely. How so? You know, number one, she's a great prosecutor. The debates, when you watch her in debate, you know she's going to prosecute Trump. All those lies Trump told during the last debate, I'm sure she would, uh, you know, fast check right immediately that what the president uh, couldn't do. Besides that, she's smart. She's very intelligent. And look, if you know how the politics of California is, you cannot run two times to be the Anthony General of California. And you think that that person is a novice in politics? No. If California, everybody knows this, if California was a different country on its own, it would be the fifth largest economy in the world. And this woman ran twice and won to be the Attorney General of that state. She ran and became the senator from that state. She's been vice president for three years. Again, I make the point that she's very smart. She's very articulate. So what do you think will unfold in the coming months? Is it just a, a couple of months before the election? What are we going to see? You know, a couple of, uh, <laughs> couple of days ago, I was saying that, uh, you know, we're going to see a lot of drama before this election is over. Uh, we've seen two already. Um, the attempted assassination of Donald Trump, the poor performance of the president, you know, which has given the, the, the Republicans so much hope until last night, you know, they were hoping that they would run against uh, Biden and they would beat him silly. But last night, the game changed. And today, practically everything they've said today just didn't make sense because even though they, had, they were working on some contingency, you know, they never actually believed that it would happen because of the initial refusal of the president they, to They really down. hoped that uh, President Joe Biden, Biden was still running. Run. So uh, everything they've said today, simply just shows you that these guys were not, at the end of the day, they were not prepared for it. What was Trump's reaction? Oh, Joe Biden was the worst president. No, nobody was talking about Joe Biden. The question was, Joe Biden has left the race. You are going to face this woman. He said, oh, she's as bad as Joe Biden. Tells you they were not prepared. There is an avalanche of supporters, donors for the Democrats now. Fantastic, Is, is fantastic. that enough to save them, though? Is that enough to carry them to the it's, finish line? It's, it's the beginning. If you know the way American politics work, it's the beginning. When a party is strongly divided, look, the last time something similar happened, but different circumstances, was in the 60s, when Vietnam completely tired out Lyndon Johnson, and there was a civil war within the Democratic Party. 
everybody was hoping that this would, I mean, the expectation was that, oh, this would probably be the same thing. But the fact that even potential candidates have all endorsed Harris makes a difference for now. Right. Makes a difference. There's a generational gap between Harris and Trump. Do you think she will be able to bring in those younger voters that they desperately need? Absolutely, meet? absolutely. You know, 36,000 young American women all over the place working on the phone to mobilize young voters to vote for her. I mean, there's so much enthusiasm. There's so much, you know, energy now in the Democratic Party. A few weeks ago, I mean, if you, what am I saying? Saturday, you know, everybody was say, calling on the president to, to, to leave the race, particularly after the, the disastrous performance of the debate. And then suddenly overnight, completely things have changed. Young voters who said they were not going to vote because they had two old candidates and now back thinking that they will vote. And you know what's more interesting? Trump is now the oldest in the race. <laughs> he is the oldest. And so Joe Biden's supporters are heartbroken, though. I mean, everyone is praising him, you know, to high heavens. He's a patriot. He's selfless. He's done the best, you know, taking the best step, you know, for the Democrats. But his supporters are a bit unhappy. And you would uh, understand I, why. I, I, think, I, I think that at the end of the day, they will get over it. Because for one simple reason, they want to beat Donald Trump. So they will get over it. And so you think Donald Trump is beatable in this election? Oh, absolutely. Uh, absol Look, if Biden had not dropped out, Trump could or may have won the election. But you know, when you look at the polls, when you study the polls, it's a question of studying the data. Donald Trump has actually not made any significant progress. It is still the numbers. The numbers haven't changed. Donald Trump is not rising. Look, he's getting 20-something percent, not because people love Donald Trump, but because they thought Biden did very well. He's too old to continue to be president. That is out of the race. I always give the example that four, year, four years ago, 68% of Americans thought by, uh, Trump won the first election. The last debate, guess how many numbers thought? The same 64%. I don't know whether you speak Yoruba, but Basala will say, could fail, could pass. You know, he didn't fail, he didn't pass, but he's still in the same class. That's exactly the situation Trump is. Ambassador Joe Keshi, thank you for being on the program. Thank you, Constance. <laughs> well, that's it for this edition of Arise Prime Time. Do join us again tomorrow. From me and the entire team here in Abuja, goodbye and thank you for watching.